absolutely frigid outside today and i'm resisting the urge to bundle up i am three chapters into frankenstein by mary shelley i told y'all on my community's post area of my channel that i started this a couple of days ago i am really enjoying it if you don't know the story of frankenstein it pretty much follows this scientist named dr victor frankenstein who kind of becomes obsessed with creating life and he finds this like finds this science that kind of studies how humans are made and how life is given to them. It follows him as he finds the science and creates this monster based on what he learns. It also follows, I think, as this monster succumbs to this loneliness because obviously the monster is the only one of its kind. It's really, really good. So the book kind of, I guess the book is kind of exploring mortality it's exploring life and being a creator and kind of creativity in any sense because honestly creativity is an obsession and this book kind of explores that because though Victor Frankenstein wants to create life the obsession of creating is really what's kind of driving him and I'm really really excited to get to the point of views from the monster because I know that's what's going to be probably the most interesting to me and that's really what I want to analyze but of course I'm probably going to write a full book review book reflection on my Substack about the book once I finish it so you'll probably see all of my thoughts over there before here. I'm really really interested in like I just said on how this book is exploring creativity as an obsession and I'm also really intrigued on the science that v Dr. Victor discovered but not really discovered he just read about because it's not his own discovery i'm really really intrigued to see the making of the monster i don't think the monster has a name i think the monster is nameless for the entirety of the book but i'm really interested to see how mary shelley ends up um 
exploring mortality how do you define life how is life given and things like that i am just so enamored with the way that mary shelley writes and her voice her um tone her vocabulary the way she writes is just so refreshing and even though this book was published in 1818 i want to say it feels very modern and fresh and just very new it feels like it was written in the 90s not the 1800s she wrote this book when she was 19 i aspire to be her like honestly every single page has some markings on it because i'm literally like researching every single word that she mentions because i'm like what what and I'm going to read to you a few of my favorite quotes from the novel so far. Um, I think that's really all I want to say in terms of themes. This book is honestly very easy to read. Like I said, considering that it was published in the 1800s, this book is extremely easy to read. Um, and I guess that's just my mindset with classics as I go into it expecting them to be old in a sense or very difficult to read because of the time that they were written. But... I honestly haven't had that experience with many classics. This is this is fantastic. And I am literally reading this the week of Halloween. So you know. You know I'm having a fun time. And it's freezing cold outside. It's kind of gloomy. Just the perfect vibes for me. I'm going to read to you a few of my favorite quotes so far. Like I told you, I'm on chapter 3. And I have 4 tabs in the book already. And that's not including. And I don't tab everything that I underline. I tab very specific things and I already have four. I'm going to read a little bit more tonight, but I try to not fly through classics because they tend to take a little bit more brain power from me and I do tend to analyze them a little bit more and I just would like to be in the world of whatever book I'm reading for a little bit longer than I would for any other book because it's a classic and I feel like it should be savored. But I also feel that way for a couple of other genres. So I don't know. Maybe that's just how I read. Probably is. By the way, these are the tabs that I use. I really don't know what brand they are. But I'm going to show you them anyway. Just in case you look them up and you see a picture that looks like them. I just ordered these recently. I think I showed you in a vlog if I'm not mistaken. These are the tabs that I use here. I use a very basic pen. You don't really have to search for them. They're probably at the dollar store. <laughs> I love these. I love these pens. I'm going to read to you a few of my favorite quotes so far. And I guess talk about what they made me think of, I guess. I don't know. First one that I marked is on page 32, the beginning, the beginning of chapter two and it says harmony was the soul of our companionship and the diversity and contrast that subsisted in our characters drew us nearer together so you know i have to mark that one i love a good romance it is weird because he is marrying his cousin i get it that was that time but guys I, I, that does not excuse it like that's still nasty <laughs> Then the next one is on page 34. I also record those events which led by insensible steps to my aftertale of misery. For when I would account to myself for the birth of that passion which afterwards ruled my destiny, I find it arise like a mountain river from the ignoble and almost forgotten sources, but swelling as it proceeded. It became a torment which in its course has swept away all my hopes and joys. The exploration of the obsession of creativity and what creativity really does to the mind and how obsessive you become about what you create and when you create, how you create, the way it's portrayed in this book. Insane. Insane. And that quote was just spot on. Like page 35. Y'all see how literally I've marched something on every single page? And he's talking about here kind of searching for something. I don't really know what it, what exactly it is. Maybe a potion of life? Something like that. And he says that wealth was an inferior object, but what glory would attend the discovery if I could banish disease from frame and render man invulnerable to any but a violent death? 
And I guess he thought that if he found this potion or whatever, that that would prevent disease and death. But I love that quote. And then page 37, I just had to put a tab at the top of the page because I liked two quotes on that page and it's only like a short passage on this page. The strangely our souls constructed and by such slight ligaments are we bound to prosperity or ruin. I have to write like this dog. Like there's no other option. There's no other option. And then on that same page, this is the second quote. Destiny was too potent and her immutable laws had decreed my utter and terrible destruction. And that's where I stop. It is so good and I'm really enjoying it so much. I'm really trying to take my time with it even though I just want to fly through the rest of it. I can't wait to see what happens next, but I do want to take my time with it. I'm having a good, good grand old time. So far, my favorite new vocabulary word from this book is predilection, a preference or special liking to something. I love Mary Shelley's vocabulary so much. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I can't wait to see what happens next.